Um, there are a few different ways to handle forms, but my favorite is a library called Formic. So before we get into that, uh, let me show you what I have here. This is a login screen that I created. This is how you would normally do form state submissions in React Native. You would create a text input. On change text, you would use to set the state of whatever you want to change. Here we have email and password. So uh, you have a login button here, and during on press, you'll call some function that takes in the email and password state, and you'll do something with it, like pass it to a server, for example. Um, so I just have like a very bare bones login screen here. So let's see how we add Formic to this. So if we go to the documentation here, uh, go to, to Formic, uh, it's created by a person named Jared Palmer. Just go through the documentation here and we'll start with npm install Formic save. I've already done that in the app here, so I won't bore you with that part right now. So there are a couple of different ways to, um, to use Formic. You can use the Formic component here itself, uh, which I actually don't like to use this, but it's, a, it's an option. So you can set the initial values on submit and render. So I won't actually walk you through this right now because we're going to use with Formic. With Formic is a higher order React component, which just means that it's a component that wraps another component. Uh, so you can actually go through this if you're more curious. Uh, I'll be doing pretty much what this is doing right here. So let's go back to our app code here. So I won't walk you through all this right now, but there's a few different parts here that are uh, worth mentioning in with Formic. There's the map props to values, which is how you actually um, map whatever props you want in your form. Uh, you you want to keep track of those. So that's um, this is where you would actually name those at and map those to certain values. Validate is where you would have all your validation logic here. We'll get into that in a little bit. And handle submit is where you would actually uh, put any logic that you want when you press the button in your form that you want to submit. So let's go to our app here and we'll get started. So first of all, we actually want to import what we need in our component here. So we want to import with Formic from the Formic library. And then we actually want to change how we uh, export our class. Let's actually get rid of this at the top and let's do export default with Formic. And any of our, uh, the properties that I just mentioned before go inside of with Formic. And then on the outside here, we actually just wrap our app here in the end like we would normally do. You'll get used to it as you use forms more in React Native. So now how do we actually map the properties that we want in the form to certain values? So now this is where we will use map props to values. So we have a map prop to values property here and we say that email will be an empty string, password will be an empty string in the very beginning. So that's all we need for the first step. So now we need a way to, to handle the submission of a form. So we have a method here called handle submit. And the values are the values that are contained within the form itself, which are these values here, email and password. So the email and password props are used in the values field here. And the props field here is used for the props that are passed into the parent component, which in this case is the app itself, like app.js. So we only wanna see email and password, so we use values here. So how do we actually call this handle submit? Well, we actually call it the same way that we would on a normal button or on a normal one press call. So we have our arrow function here and we just point to this.props.handle submit. So handle submit from 
formic is just passed in as a normal prop to the component, which is nice. So now we're logging this to the console. So let's go to our React Native debugger and see what happens when we press login. So no nothing happens, why is that? Oh, it's probably because we did not save. So don't forget to save. Let's go back to our debugger, press login again. So you see email and password are empty strings. So if we type something in, we will see that they are still empty strings here. So we need a way to actually store the information in the state of the form. So right now we're just using our normal component state. So let's get rid of our component state here. So we need a way for one change text to change the state using formic. So we have a method called set field value that's, uh, that's given to us by formic in our props field. So I'm actually just going to paste this in here real quick. Um, Let's see, let's get rid of this. So this dot props dot set field value. Set field value is part of Formic. Um, it's given to us in our, with Formic higher order component here. So we wanna set the value of email to whatever the change text is. So we wanted to do something similar for uh, for the password here. So let's copy paste this and put it in here and change this to password and password. So now when we change the text, the actual state of the form is being, or the form is being notified that its text is being changed and it's storing it in the state. So now if we save this and we go back to our debugger here, and we just type in something like hello, press login. We can see that our email is hello, and we could type and we have to change our password now because that was left from before. So we just do something random here. And now we see that we have email, password are actually being changed as we type, which is nice. So this is one of the great benefits about Formic is that you don't have to really worry about um, your component state. So Actually, something that you could do later is just make a stateless component for your form. Um, and it's one less place where you have to worry about uh, keeping track of your own state. So now we have that completed. We have one more step and that is validation. So we want to validate that our fields are correct. So I'm actually going to put in some uh, fields here. Uh, text style equals styles dot validation text. So before we do that, there's another field that we'll use. It is called validate. So this is the basic way that you would validate something in Formic. So you're, so this is built into Formic. It has a values and a props, very similar to what we have in our handle submit. So for us, what do we actually want to do? We actually only care about the values in this case. So we want to create a object that we return from this function. So let's call it errors. So we'll do constant errors. We'll just call it like an empty object for now. And then we want to actually check our values. So we'll have a bunch of if statements here. Um, I'm actually just going to copy and paste these in here and, and explain afterwards. So let's just copy and paste this in here. So we have values.email. So this is saying if values.email is not null, then we set errors.email to email required. So th these names here, you, you don't have to make these the same as your props here, but you probably should just to make things more readable and consistent in your app. This could be like errors dot uh, blue if you want to, but we're gonna call it errors dot email. So if this is not filled in, we say email required, 
else we have this regular expression here. This is just one that I found one line to uh, check whether an email is valid or not. And if it's not valid, then we say invalid email address. Uh, similar with the password, we say if we have no password, then we pass the string password required. And if the length is less than a certain length, in this case, I say 10, then we say min length must be um, at least 10 characters. So there's one more step here that you might forget, but don't forget it or else you won't get any errors back and you need to return errors or whatever you name the object up here. So that's actually all you need to validate what I have here for email and password. You can add in as many more as you want to. So how do we use these errors? So in our text here, the good thing about Formic is that everything is passed in as props to your component from with Formic. So now we can do this dot props dot, I think it's errors. Yeah, errors dot email. So we're just taking that from the props here and we're putting that into our text field here. And then we can copy and paste, actually just copy and paste this entire line. And we'll put this into here and we'll say password. So now we have extra text fields in our screen here. And so let's see what happens if we press the login button. Oh, we get two errors or two error messages. It's read because of the style that I have here in the validation text. But yeah, as you can see, we have our error messages here. And then the good thing about Formic is that if you type and your validation is no longer valid, the text changes for you. It's read because of the style that I have here in the validation text. So with the password, if we have anything in that's under 10 characters, we get this message, we put something in over, then we don't get the error anymore. So in your form here, when you press submit, the this handle submit function is not actually called until all your validation is, or all of your validation requirements are met. And to prove that, let's go to the console here, have something valid in here, and then we do, 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 do press login. We can see that we have our fields here. So yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for Formic. It's very easy to use. There's a lot more involved in Formic if you want to go further with it, but um, this is primarily what you'll be using with Formic. Uh, it's very simple, very straightforward. As a quick summary, um, Map props to values is how you keep track of your fields in Formic that you want to monitor. Validate is where you actually validate the fields in your form. So in our case, email and password. And handle submit is what you would use when you actually want to submit your app, normally through like a button press. So, and don't forget to wrap your component with, with Formic as a HOC, or you can use the Formic component, which I, personally don't like. So yeah, this is it. I hope this helps you get started with forms and uh, see how easy working with forms in React Native can be. So until next time, thank you.